Narendra Kumar or Nari as most people know him is one of the most influential people in the world of men's fashion in today's day and age. He's been voted as one of the top 50 menswear designers and today he's heading the creative aspect of the entire vertical called Amazon fashion. He's interacted with Jeff Bezos and Jeff Bezos is just one of the million successful people that this man has interacted with. He's learned from all of them. He's a crazily voracious reader. This conversation of the Ranveer Show is going to add a lot of information into your mind. We're also going to touch upon what makes a human being more attractive. And you know what? More than the information, there's a lot of classiness to be gained from this man. So without further ado, enjoy Narendra Kumar on the Ranveer Show. One of the best things about my own career, one of my biggest blessings is that this YouTuber slash entrepreneur tag opens up a lot of doors. I'm very fortunate to have met Narendra Kumar. Pleasure. Nari. Yeah. Uh, proud to call you somewhat of a mentor to me. Uh, glad to be one. <laughs> proud to also... I didn't know that, but glad to be one. <laughs> well, you are. <laughs> proud to also uh, know you as a fellow... I'd like to call it bachelor. I right. Mean, you are in a relationship, but you're an unmarried 49-year-old person. Yeah. And you don't see that a lot in India. You don't see that. That's by choice. Yeah. And That's by choice. Some of our most interesting conversations have been about relationships, about yeah. partying. Right. Uh, but also about how you've landed the country's most desired creative job. Right. You're the head of uh, creatives. For Amazon fashion. For Amazon fashion. Yeah. Glad to be there. Nice to be there from the very beginning. And you're considered one of the world's top 50 fashion designers. Menswear designers. Menswear designers. That. <laughs> and you're talking to menswear YouTuber. <laughs> so we're gonna, Absolutely. We're going to be tackling all these topics through this podcast. Yeah, look forward to it. Go for it. So I want to ask you, man, uh, how did you go from being an everyday average sports playing Bombay kid? To, to being up there? Yes. I mean, a, a long journey. I mean, you know, um, I was really not that great at studies and education was really not my forte. I didn't, I didn't do so great when it came to my university. Really did badly, actually. Passed by copying, <laughs> if I have to say that right now. Uh, but um, I think and I was quite lost for many years until I really found my calling when I was 26, 27. What did uh, you do from 21 to 26? My, my first job was selling photocopies at 10 yeah. paisa and 15 paisa from office to office in Narman Point. Were you that guy who, in the Xerox shop? Yeah, it's there, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Packed that and gave it to people. Uh, and then I think my parents felt a little bad for me and they said I should get, you should get me a more respectable job kind of stuff. And uh, I got a job selling glass bottles, like milk bottles. And I did that for about five, six years. And then I heard this uh, school, NIFT, National Institute of Fashion Technology, opening up. And they looked for one year's, uh, they looked for either a first class in graduation or a year's experience in the industry. I had neither. And so I quit my job the day I got to know about it. And life took on from then. You always like clothes, you like fashion? I did. I, I mean, I, I did like fashion from the very beginning. I remember the first time, maybe I was in my 10th standard or so. Uh, I used to alter my clothes, my own clothes for the wow. fit and the shape. I used to use my mother's hand sewing machine to play around with the shapes and fits of clothing. But uh, then there were no school, real schools to uh, for boys to learn fashion in. You mm. know, there were only girls' schools, mm. and fashion was not considered a career for uh, boys at that time. Yeah. How do you climb up the ranks? How do you become one of the world's fifty top fashion designers? I tell myself that I think to put it simply is I tell myself I told myself when I finished fashion school that I should be the best I just kept the bar really high so I said to myself I should be the best in the world and nothing less but I also knew that it was a very difficult task for men's wear design for a designer in India to reach on to the top kind of stuff and but what I did is put my head down and worked at it every single day of my life every single day of my career I looked at creating the best that I could. Hmm. Um, always fascinated by something nice that I would do. It would be something that would uh, lift me to such great heights uh, and take me past all my depression. All your depression. All my depression, yeah. Take us through that. Because a lot of, you know, depression's always been around. Yeah. But it's just that because of social media and the modern day, it's been highlighted a lot more by 
young it's people. A, a, yeah, it's highlighted more and it's seen as a disease. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I don't know if it is true and I'm not qualified to say if it's a disease or not. But I look at both the high and the low, the depression for being, that inspired me, that drove me every day. It was a teacher? It was it was a teacher, actually, yeah, from the age of, it was not just a teacher. I think it was a lesson learned in life very much early uh, that my parents took me to these lectures by Krishnamurti, J. Krishnamurti. And uh, that's where I got a f understanding that, you know, you're really not much in control of what is going to happen to your life. Mm. Uh, the only thing you can do is live it. You know, of course you can plan it, but your plans might not go the way you want to. Mm. And so it allowed me to deal with the highs and the lows in the same manner. And therefore, uh, both the high and the low were inspiring. And I've created great shows, ideas from being depressed and also from being high. Like, could you give an example of something you learned from Jay Krishnamurti that stayed with you? I mean, I think that um, that there is no great authority in life, uh, a God kind of spirit. Uh, it is about how you deal with everyday life and how you look at life every day and how you deal with your next person, the person you meet. And really that is where apparently the godliness comes in is how you deal with the next person you meet mm. or the people you see. And uh, that to me has really been a driving idea through my career and through my life. Yeah. Also with successful people, especially people like you who've done different things and been successful in different things, I'm sure you have like this core formula that you follow, you know, like, okay, work hard. Yeah. Keep learning about this industry. Absolutely. And maybe that X factor. Yeah, the X factor was just, you know, if I were to describe my life, I mean, that X factor would be no rear view. You know, I've uh, always wanted to expand on every aspect of what I do. And uh, when I did fashion, I also taught in fashion school. I was also a fashion journalist. I've done photography. I told myself that I should be trained in every aspect of that function or that career. Hmm. You know, uh, most people just become designers and just remain designers for 30, 40 years in their lives. I couldn't do that. I wanted to know every aspect of design from styling. I don't know if you guys know, we style India's most seminal film on fashion called Fashion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with Priyanka yeah. and Kangana and Mukda and people. And uh, so I, I had this need to know every aspect of the work that I was doing. So mm -hmm. it never, what it did was it kept me independent, at least had a top view. Maybe I didn't do everything at the same time, but at least I knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And probably that's what really helped me uh, bring these things. And I used all of that and everything. That, and I tell myself that everything that I have learned through my life has always been helpful because mm -hmm. somewhere or the other it has come it has been of help, whether it is my personal life or how I see it or how I execute my ideas. Like they say knowledge is never wasted. It is absolutely agree and all knowledge is great knowledge. Yeah. You're also someone who reads a lot. And I do. I know you as a person and you're the kind of person who reads again to add layers to their mind. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think there are reading is a way of understanding how other people yeah. think and, you know, to grow yourself. You relate to other people yeah. and therefore without understanding them, it becomes difficult to relate to people 100%. on this, on life. Yeah. You know, with my generation, a lot of people don't read. Right. But there are people who are hungry for knowledge. So things like this podcast have become right. our versions of books. Right. So uh, I think the difference between books and podcasts is that books, you go and you scan the subconscious mind and the conscious mind of the writer, the, right. the author. Right. But with podcasts, you're getting a larger quantity of information that's spread out. You're not going as deep. He, you're getting a lot of... So, he, so I read multiple books at the same time. I read five, six different books on different yeah. subjects, yeah. you know. Uh, and I recently saw in apparently a documentary film on how you expand your brain, how your neurons fire when you're doing multiple things as opposed to doing just a single mm -hmm. thing, you know. Uh, it has happened all along and this was just a confirmation. Uh, but it's not like I would read a book from page one to page to the last page. Mm. I mean, I go back to books in different stages. And the most important thing is 
picking out the essence of the book mm. because you know the author has spent a lot of time qualifying that thought mm. there is a single line i if you can collapse a book into five lines that is really the essence of the book you know and to me always yeah more important than what somebody has done in their lives like artists for instance it was always important to me to understand how they grew up yeah what their influences were and how did they think mm. because for me it gives me a way to adapt their thought process into my own world instead of just repeating what they have done physically and convert it into my world so yeah. it gives me a deeper method of thinking and i was always uh interested by the method of the thought rather than What's the final the thought in itself wow beautiful so straight off the top of your head right. three books that were like life changing for you you know different books have influenced me in different ways in different uh i think number one was uh krishnamurti's book the awakening of intelligence j krishnamurti j krishnamurti's book of awakening of intelligence uh and the other book was the atheist guide to reality living life without illusions hmm. by alex rosenberg which is absolutely a fantastic fantastic view of why we are here mm. as human beings on this earth mm. and what is the purpose that we did uh and it says there is no real purpose to our lives but since we are here we should make the most of it yeah mm. and i think the third one is called the antidote uh by oliver berkman and that talks about for those for people who and the byline says for people who hate positive thinking <laughs> and I, and i think it's a real great view uh because positive thinking was created uh in the six in the 50s and 60s in america for people to get over the war and depression and live in the future and escape what they were living then you know today if you look at the millennials and gen z everybody wants to live the moment hmm. you know hmm. this positive thinking of like oh i want to live what i'm going to live 20 years from now live and believe that i'm going to work towards that I don't know how relevant it is today in today's world. I think it's coming back it's making a huge comeback. So I I think that you know contrary I feel that you know positive thinking uh is um in today's world people want to live today more mm -hmm. than today and you look at and that's the reason why everybody has 15 different things that they do don't last in a job for 6 months or 8 yeah. months you know. So people are finding they're searching for what makes them happy mm. and sometimes small things don't make them happy you know positive thinking is just live like you are happy today yeah you know and it might not be there but just live about think about it today you're living in the future and you really don't want to do that and for most young people i know they want to do things now because there is lots to do hmm. um why did you not get married through all this i think that marriage is signing a paper is never a important issue for me it was commitment uh, and commitment is what is really important commitment to your work commitment to your partner commitment to all of that those are important things you know and uh, a in a, a paper does not qualify that yeah mm. uh, i I've, i have been through a lot in my life and i have been through uh i have been with partners which are really long i have a partner for many years now uh all of that kind of stuff and and business partner work partner all of that kind of stuff and i think that uh it is commitment that is really the most important thing you know you could have signed that paper and not be committed to mm. yeah so for me i i never looked at it as an important aspect god like uh, but did you see marriages fail around you as well like your friends and things like that but i would still not use that as a qualification as to why i never got married but i from, i don't yeah, yeah. but from an external perspective as yeah. an observer why no, i think the pressures are a lot okay expectations are a lot that's yeah. why the marriage today i mean yeah because you know you are open today to so many influences that were never there before in your life you for know? example i mean people that you meet careers that you want uh, uh travel that you want to do and it's difficult to find people with both the same level of expectations and somebody who would probably encourage you in your own journey hmm. you know and a lot of people look within themselves rather than look to others to help others and put people out mm -hmm. um and i think that the pressure is a lot more you know 
uh, there are a lot more things to do, a lot more things to achieve. And unless you have this commitment of taking each other along or multiple people along, you find it very difficult to get through a long relationship. Lord. And have you seen any successful long relationships? Of course I have. My parents were married for the longest time what ever. What did they do right? My, my, I mean, I, I think that uh, they committed and respected each other. They knew that each one qualified their life. They were friends first before they got married, more than anything else. Yeah. I mean, it's not to say that you have not to be friends. To you, you can be strangers and you can get together. You can explore and you can find out each other in the journey as you get along. And that itself is a great thing, you know. So there are lots of successful people, but you also hear of a lot of things that go uh, awry when it comes to relationships and marriages. Uh, and I'm no judge for this. What advice do you have for people in their 20s, both in terms of relationships and work? I think that uh, relationships can nurture you a lot and can destroy you also yeah uh you need to be able to be you need to be mindful of what uh relationships are and how it is nurturing you i mean nurturing cannot be selfish cannot be just about you it also depends on how you nurture the other person because that is what is a nourishing relationship mm. where you can nurture each other 100%. in the ways that you want to do as far as careers are concerned you know today there has never been a time like this over the last 200 years of our industrial revolution. You know, we learned today, our, our parents learned today from ge generation to generation. They, they grew up, their parents taught them, their father taught them, do the values. And they spoke about careers to their children, you know. And they said, I mean, 100 years, 50 years ago, if someone said, oh, beta, tum doctor ban jao, because that is great for you in life. Uh, you did it. Because that was the choice. Today, I think the other real important thing is how health has improved over life. Hmm. Earlier people told you, generations in the past, people told you that you have to do and build your career from the age of, say, 21, 22 to 60. Hmm. And then you were retired, hmm. you know. And then you had to save for the next part of your life. The age in the future is not going to be limited to 60 you know, people are already living till their 80s. In another 20 years, they will live until 100. And you probably have to work until you're 80. Mm -hmm. And you will be in good health and good, you know, kind of stuff. Because yeah. all of that is improving. Healthcare is improving. Life is improving. Standards are improving for everybody, you know. So people will live longer. And in, in that situation, how do you measure your life? You know, do you want to become a CEO by in 15 years of your career, within 15 years of your career? Do you want to be an entrepreneur? What do you want to be? Because what do you do after that? You know, there are not millions and millions of CEOs. There are only re limited amount of jobs that go with that. Uh, you know, how do you maintain or sustain your interest in one thing over the next 40, 50, 60 years? Yeah. It's a difficult thing also for people, you know. Yeah. So... Uh, that's where people need to think, you know. I would say that it is a steady climb instead of a vertical climb when it comes to careers. Uh, I think that as you build your career, you got to know today every aspect of your career, you know. Uh, I mean, you cannot be just a, uh, a master of one. You need to be a master of one, which is the basis of your career. But you need to be a jack of all other stuff because... Today is the age of the entrepreneur. And to be an entrepreneur, you need to know something about everything. Mm, 100%. Yeah. You also, you work with a lot of young people in your Amazon team. Right. So I'm sure in your hiring process, you're hiring people with that little kind of mentality of you look for certain things. Right. What do you look for in that hot prospect? I think that, um, you know, l looking for people in is, you're looking at a place where you think about the new work culture. You think about millennials and how they work, how you're going to foster, how you're going to help them, how you're going to nurture them into their careers and the kind of backgrounds they come with. You know, are you a free thinker? Are you independent? Do you follow processes? Uh, how do you structure your thought process and how widely you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for me, that is the most important thing. And some of the questions I ask people at, at um, interviews is um, what is top of their playlist music list <laughs> currently, you know? 
and or what are the three top books they are reading currently kind of stuff i mean not related anything to do with the actual uh, job but the but structure of their minds minds you know to me that is really the essence of the person because i know if you have your favorite music so who's your favorite musician you know maybe a band pearl jam hmm. you know and for me what is important is what do you know about them how do you follow what you love and to me that gives me a perspective how the person thinks about what they do hmm. because if you are really thorough about what you love you know it could be anything you know it could be music it could be wine it could be it could be traveling it could be cars it could be anything of kind how deeply you get into it allows me to give a allows me the perspective of the person as being someone who is thorough in what they love and so definitely they should be thorough in what they do yeah so yeah. Nari, you know you're a really good guy and though your career's gone good really, is a relative <laughs> term to use from you know? <laughs> from when i've met you like you, you seem like a really nice person so <laughs> thank I'm, you i'm sure you've like you know you've gone really fast in your career you've gone way ahead of a lot of people right and i'm sure you've seen people who don't capitalize on their moment right what have those people done wrong you know the ones who've not reached where they were supposed to reach i mean i, I think that that's a lesson in life that i have learned you know i used to also be like this person racing ahead doing the next thing and the next thing and the next thing i couldn't stop myself and then i realized that i was just creating these ideas of next thing where everybody else was benefiting from it hmm. profiting from the idea hmm, hmm. you know and uh, i also told myself i need to do the next thing but i need to be able to uh make the most of the things that i'm talking about uh develop it further develop it a little di deeper and layer it with the new things mm -hmm. you know and uh, and that is really important uh i mean a simple example would be i do shows and my shows i would have like 30 different ideas in one show mm -hmm. yeah and i realized that you know i was doing 30 different ideas but there were other people who were taking my one idea and building empires and businesses out of, for yeah. themselves yeah. Yeah. and i decided there that, that's when i realized that i needed to slow down i needed to be able to uh put this out in a way that was digestible and i could take ownership of it mm -hmm. so they say that the curse of creativity is being slightly ungrounded in terms of if you're born with a lot of creativity right. you're also born with a slight lack of stability right i think stability is good because it keeps that itch of learning uh it, it allows you to build but you don't have you, you know you don't have to go over the top i mean i don't believe in this fantasy idea of you know you need to take drugs to be creative mm. you know you don't have to be wallowing in drugs all the time to be create this kind of creative person uh i never felt the need for that in my life ever mm. uh but it's kept the hunger on i mean for me uh is what are the new ideas that are firing my brain you know mm. what is the new it's the hunger to learn that really keeps firing and uh and i think that's what careers are about i mean for creative people also you can be a straight jacket straight jacket person but you can be terribly terribly creative yeah. in what you think yeah. and you know a lot of research shows that you need to be a little crazy to survive or i would twist seal song and i say you need to be a little crazy to be creative hmm. uh the craziness comes not from your demeanor or your personality the craziness comes craziness comes from your hunger to learn more got it yeah and sometimes people don't see that hmm what fucks up careers because you're someone who's worked in multiple industries right what what fucks up careers i think relationships <laughs> and how you deal with no i mean not personal interpe uh, not family relationships but i think interpersonal relationships it's really important how you deal with the other person as in your coworkers as your coworkers yeah oh, okay. and, and and i think that uh you know failing is not a bad thing in life you know as long as you learn from it yeah and not we only hear about the success stories we don't hear about failures but you know big people have also failed in life mm. you know steve jobs was thrown out of the job that he company that he created but he came back to be successful and there are many stories like that there are great people who have done great stuff and looking down upon failure is a is probably not the right thing that we have learned now that is not the right thing uh, it is something that is a part of the journey because you don't know the downsides of everything you learn a lot from it 
So it's important, you know, to to learn from your failings and grow from it. Yeah. You know, you're also someone who's spoken to Jeff Bezos, like right. you're at that kind of a leadership position at Amazon. Right. What's it like hanging out with him? What's made him the world's richest person? And what's his mentality that's trickled down all the layers of the Amazon organization? I think. I mean, I, I will qualify it by a, a little a little story of my interview. I, I interviewed with many people in Amazon, uh, including the global expansion head and people in the U.S. and teams across. Uh, and you know, pe and finally, I was asked. So, uh, you know, you are a famous designer. You designed for Mr. Bachchan, Bollywood, Shah Rukh, everyone. Uh, you've done this fashion film. Uh, why do you want? Why would you want to work with Amazon? You know, I think my my answer then really was qualifies what you were saying is what that organization believes in. Was as a creator director, I I was I told them how many people get a chance to change the way a billion people live. Yeah, it's the perspective of your job. It's the vision that you have for the role that you are playing in that company. Always have a large vision. Uh, vision beyond what most people cannot comprehend, you know, and that's what really is Amazon. Amazon is this single person's vision along working, of course, along working with the whole team of people over many years or having a vision that was 20 years long, you know, but working at it every day with processes, structure, analysis everything in place you know in amazon there's a great saying it's always day one wow yeah every day is day one and we still live day one every day yeah mm. and and i think that that is the greatness of that organization that it is meant you had a vision which started from a book to an to such a large place today in the world uh, for what, books what book was it? What book was it? it? Selling books, basically. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> selling books. Amazon began as a book selling, book company, right? Got so, uh, and that, and you can see that creativity. You can see that uh, energy amongst the team members. Everyone in the team is as energized when they think and talk about stuff like this. Yeah. But on a human level, what was in Jeff Bezos that took him that far? It was the same thing. No, but I, I think it was one the vision, of course. And the fact that, you know, uh, there was value for people who worked with him, um, sharing and understanding value and building good structure where a sense of value was appreciated uh, by everybody. And, and the very fact that everybody had a voice mm. and it would be heard, you know, from the lowest in the team to the highest in the team. This is something, you know, great about Amazon is if somebody, even at the lowest level, asks you a question, you're obliged to answer and answer with respect. Mm. You know, you cannot just say, okay, shoo, yeah. this is my answer and just go. You need to qualify everything that you answer. And I have learned a lot really? being there. I have learned a lot being there, uh, understanding the thought process and the openness that mm. the organization is to bring. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's what's trickled down from him. Right. Because from whatever you've told me about him, I feel like even he's that kind of guy who takes opinions, who takes other people's opinions, despite being the world's richest person. Right, and I think that's a that's a great attribute to have as a person. What's it like being in the same room as him? Is he like a rapid thinker? I mean, no, I, I think he's like an ordinary, like you and me, talking, understanding, probing, and getting a better understanding of the place. That's, I mean, uh, um, that's what, like any other person. Got it. Does yeah. he want to get even richer? Like, is that... I don't, I think he wants to do more. Okay. I mean, richer is, what is money at some point, you know, at a, after a certain point. Mm. I think, the, the like I come back to the fact that he's hungry to do more, mm. which is amazing. That's crazy. You're yeah. like, you have no competition. You have only your own glass ceiling to break. Right. So how do you keep, stay motivated at that level? Hunger to do stuff. Wow. Without any reference point. Absolutely. That's crazy. So, Mr. Narendra Kumar, thank you again. Lovely to talk to you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've learned a lot from you um, in terms Hopefully of... Hopefully, you'll be a better man. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, too. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, I mean, like, talking to you sometimes gets a little heavy in a very positive way. Um, so, 
I I always take I, away. I, I I would say that comes with age. Yeah. No, but uh, we're we're hungry <laughs> for this kind of information and these kind of experiences. Because young people are aging faster than they used to before. Hundred <laughs> percent. And I think that's sorry, what, growing up. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one aging and growing up is one of the most beautiful things. And uh, this yeah. talking to someone who's been there, done it, and is doing it still and is continuously growing is one of the best aspects of growing up. I think. So, so. I mean, I learn every day. So for me, this is learning also. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, guys, I'm going to be linking Nari's handles down below. So make sure you check it out in the description box. Make sure you give him a follow, and uh, make sure you give this episode of the Ranvi Show a like. Share it with your friends. And until next time, from Mr. Nari and the Kumar. Well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> and pleasure being here. Likewise. I mean, pleasure being on my own show. <laughs> from Nari and the Kumar and Ranvi, we'll see you later from the Ranvi Show. Oh, this is the Ranvi Show. Yes. Is that what I was talking on? <laughs> yes. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Let's cancel everything. <laughs> delete, delete, delete. Thank you. <laughs> See you guys.